I'm Henry Rosenberg, and I'm the president of the Malignant Hypothermia Association of the United States. And I'm <coughs> sitting here with uh, Jerry Gronert, uh, whom I've known for a long time and is one of the most distinguished academic anesthesiologists I've had the pleasure to know. And Jerry has uh, agreed to speak with us, and I've been particularly interested in speaking with him about his involvement in the development of the understanding and the relationship to malignant hypothermia, as well as some of the other areas of research that he's been involved um, with. There is one um, publication that you and I were on together, and it related to the fact that we had observed um, in young children, uh, we had heard about in young children developing a sudden cardiac arrest. These were boys who didn't appear to have any other problem and um, we were concerned it was precipitated by succinylcholine. Well, certainly and young children with abnormal muscle, but you didn't know that. So if you gave them succinylcholine and they got a very high, a very great increase in their pota blood potassium levels, they get a cardiac arrest. And so you had to worry then about which children are truly normal and, and others who seem normal and are not. So you then had to be cautious. And then many people after we started talking about this, backed off on the use of succinylcholine. The advantage of succinylcholine, of course, is that in a small dose, you can paralyze the muscles up here in the airway uh, so that you can ventilate them. A lot of times when you start an anesthetic, they get a little tickled and sensitive up there, and the vocal cords close off. They get what they call laryngospasm, and you can't get any air in there at all. Now, you can give succinylcholine in small doses, and paralyze those, those muscles so you can now get oxygen in and keep them alive. Uh, but if they happen to be a child who has a muscle problem, not only can you open the cords, you can get a cardiac arrest. And now you have a child that, while you ventilate him, you now have to resuscitate him. Uh, and that becomes a very major difficulty. So you have to be cautious about who you decide you might give this drug to. There are other muscle relaxants, the curare type, but they're not as good in this as succinylcholine because succinylcholine acts instantly uh, in relatively small doses and paralyzes these muscles for certain, plus other muscles. The other muscles, like the curare type, uh, takes a huge dose uh, to be able to get paralysis of these muscles. It'll do a lot of the peripheral muscles and make them weak, but it won't break a laryngospasm unless the dose is higher. You agree? Yes, and that's, you know, it's still an, an issue out there to an extent because yes. um, uh, most of these young children, mostly boys who develop this, um, either the family doesn't give a history of muscle problems or they're too young to have developed it. But I think one of the things that came out of that is uh, a black box warning was placed in the succinylcholine package insert and it certainly made people aware that when there was a sudden cardiac arrest in an otherwise healthy child, you know, to think of hyperkalemia and treat that because a lot of the times uh, they were thinking about malignant hypothermia but the more appropriate treatment was, yeah. was hyperkalemia and I think it took a little time uh, for yes. practice to change, and I think that uh, was something, I mean, it started from a conversation between the two of us. So we uh, knew right away that that was hyperkalemia and is treated different from malignant hyperthermia, but unfortunately, people who weren't as aware of that and hadn't worked in as much as we had, uh, the, the poor bugger out in private practice somewhere who gets a problem then thinks, well, maybe it's MH, and they start treating that when they really needed to be treating the other. And it took a while to get this definition educated over into the, the, the people who are doing their everyday work and not thinking about the other things, uh, the mechanisms.